Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. On this show, we seek to share insights and experiences from the world's leading CIOs and transformation agents. So tune in if you're a CIO or an entrepreneur looking for inspiration. Welcome. Well, welcome everybody to our podcast. Today we have the esteemed global chief information officer, Christy Nader of Jet Aviation. Welcome, Christy. Hey, Lisa. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So um, for those of you who don't know Christy, uh, she, like I said, is the global chief information officer for Jet Aviation. She's been serving there for about three years. Um, and what she does is she provides strategic vision to enable digital transformation, company growth, and delivery of enterprise and client-facing technology. She brings over 21 years of an experience, and wait till you hear everything she's done. It's amazing. Um, she's been in a variety of industries. She's been in higher ed, financial services, healthcare, technology services, government contracting, and business aviation, where she's at right now, uh, giving you know a variety of perspectives regarding business needs, as well as you know security, regulatory, compliance issues uh, that are global, U.S., EMEA, APAC, all the whole world. So, uh, but before joining Jet Aviation, you know, Christy was uh, leading IT as the CIO for Perspecta and Centurion Health and Edelman Financial Services as well. So like a rich experience that we are so lucky to get a little bit of a glimpse of today. Um, as well, uh, just a, more on Christy, she got her uh, bachelor's of arts degree at George Mason, go Patriots. Um, woo -woo. We, both, we both are uh, <laughs> alum there. Uh, and she got her master's of science in management of IT from UVA. Very swanky. Um, Christy was awarded in 2023 Woman of the Year uh, from George Mason School of Business. Huge honor. Uh, she also serves as a, a volunteer mentoring and in, uh, Inspire CIOs Next Generation Leaders, which is a program for uh, young technologists who want, or mid mid-level technologists who want to uh, aspire up the ladder. She's an uh, active member of SIMCAC, which is the Capital Area Chapter of the Society of Information Management. And she volunteers with WIT, which is Women in Technology. So welcome, Christy. Wow, so thank you. I think, uh, I, I, I know I wrote like most of that information, but <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty cool to, 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 to hear that. And um, it's uh, a, a lot of years, but a lot of cool things that, uh, that I've gone through. Absolutely. Hey, can you tell our audience a little bit about Jet Aviation? Yeah, you know, what's yeah, the, absolutely. What's superpower. What are they known for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like you said, I've 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 hopped industries, and so joining Jet Aviation was the first time I've been uh, exposed to working in anything transportation related, uh, and specifically mm -hmm. aviation. The Jet Aviation, we essentially provide services for private and business aviation. We do sort of in a, in a nutshell. Um, for sort of regular language, we run FBOs, which is pri which are private airports. We do aircraft maintenance. We do um, aircraft services, flight services. We do chartering. Um, we do completions, which is customization of jets. Um, we do all of this across the globe in all three regions of the globe. We have, I think it's 52 locations now worldwide. Um, we have about 4,300 employees, um, and um, a lot of them are crew members that are flying around our customers all around the world. And um, in, our, in all of our groups, we are we are truly global, global. We're not a company that is pretty much based in the U.S. that happens to have some sites overseas. We have um, very strong regional uh, centers, and my IT organization, my IT team members are in seven countries across the globe we're headquartered in switzerland um but we have so our main our kind of our main site in the u.s is teterboro new jersey and then in switzerland and in emea and then in apac singapore is kind of our main site in that area that is incredible what a cool job you have what a cool gig you're in right now i'm jealous that's super super awesome 
All right. So what we do this time in the podcast is a little icebreaker exercise called rapid fire. And if you haven't experienced this before in the audience, Christy's going to get two options and she's going to pick one. And without explanation, we're going to go right to the very next option uh, and see uh, a little bit, see if we can not glean a little bit of information about Christy from this experience. Are you ready, Christy? I think this is a psychological experiment, so I'm sure everybody's going to assess me afterwards after what I went with my choices. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's do it. Okay. 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s music? 80s. Samsung or iPhone? iPhone. Duh. <laughs> Unix or Windows? Uh, Windows. Printing or cursive? Printing. Red or white? Red. Hair bands or country crooners? Hair bands. Fall or spring? Spring. Texting or calling? Ah, texting. <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Mac or PC? Mac. Coffee or tea? Tea. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. On-prem or in the cloud? Cloud. Star Trek or Star Wars? Ooh, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> awesome. I always let people, though, explain the last one because this is a technology podcast. Why did you pick what you picked? It's, and so it's it's funny. I think so there's there's two pieces to it. So, I mean, both. I think both both are both are super cool. I, I grew up I grew up watching Star Trek with my dad. So so there so Me there's too. a so yeah, so there's a little bit of that. Um, you know, you know, um, I can't think of words, not, not nostalgia, but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, uh, got some, um, memories there. And, uh, but, but if, if you gave me a choice right now to, to play one of the other, it would probably be one of the star Wars movies. And I think, think probably cause they're, they're a little bit newer and cooler and, and different storylines. Star, star Trek definitely has that cheese factor, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but, but the best thing about star Trek was those, the wacky like 60s 70s like how they did things and the special effects i mean it's you know so cheesy it's incredibly cool but uh but so i'd lean towards star wars just because i would watch more of those again i think i love it i love it good good answers you did a great job you are the first guest on the CIO podcast with Lisa Roger, who actually followed the directions and didn't have an explanation. So you, my friend, get a badge. Well done, well done, <laughs> good job. I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you. I knew you could do it. Okay, <laughs> so now in the program, what we like to do is get into the meat of things. And for us this year at Otimo, we're all about digital transformation. And we want to learn from industry like giants as yourself who've been through the ringer on these things and have lessons that we can all learn from this. So let's start off with like strategic vision and how this plays a role. You know, how does, uh, if done correctly, digital transformation align with the business and, you know, what business objectives and strategies are? Yeah. So, so I, I, I think, I think it's interesting because, um, so years ago, the, the UVA program that I went through to get my master's, the MS and MIT, the whole focus on that program, which plug for that program, by the way, if anyone's looking for something like that, it was to take people that wanted to, uh, be CIOs, but not, not operational CIO, like strategic. And so it was sort of a blend of, of, it was like an MBA with an IT flair. And, and so much of the focus is on um, what, what are the business goals? And so when you think about uh, digital transformation and then uh, business strategy and, and how, how do they align, ultimately, I mean, every, every single business at the very basic level is out to grow revenue, you know, increase margins, you know, reduce that operational cost, you know, you know, I think separate from may, may, maybe some of the nonprofits, some of the governments, a little bit different mission wise, but for profit, that's kind of the formula. And when you look at all the companies, uh, we're, we're so, so dependent on technology to do anything now. And then when you have conversations around how, how do how do we grow and how do we um, 
how do we grow our volume? And you know, you want to grow your volume of business, whether you want to sell more to existing customers or add more customers, or you know, if you want to make more widgets, what whatever it is, you technology is the answer. Technology is the answer to be able to do that more efficiently, more effectively. And um, and I think that that um, business leaders are realizing that 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 is the case. Uh, when I was in financial services, my CEO used to say, we're not a financial company, we're a technology company. Because we were so focused on on technology, it was at the heart of everything that we did. So I think that that's truly what it is. And and companies go end up over the years typically going through kind of multiple transformations. You know, you go through a transformation and after say five years-ish, you know, you're essentially kind of ready to do that again because at that point the company has new goals or looking at the um, the competitors in the industry, you have to change and morph to stay competitive. And um, so people don't spend their time on manual things and wasting their time on those sort of things. We need we need the technology and we need the technology to drive it. <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll get into a question later when we think about emerging technologies and what that can do for that as well. But I just think technology is at, at the heart of it. Um, and the conversations that I have with so many companies, everybody is having that focus on to stay competitive. They they have to do it. So what's your role in this though? What's the role of the CIO? That's my next follow on question based on what you just said and how it's all tied. How does the CIO play a role? And you said something interesting. You said operational CIO versus strategic CIO. So see, can you pull those threads for me and put it together? Yep, yep, absolutely. There, There's definitely what I see. I see two, two flavors of CIOs in the world. And um, it's not that one is bad and one is good. It's it's situational. Um, right. You'll have an operational CIO in, in some companies, either they've, they've hit the point where they feel comfortable and they are, um, they're, yeah, th things are going great. They feel like they don't have um, too much either. Well, maybe, maybe they don't have competition, but they they um, they don't feel as concerned about um, needing to change rapidly. They may have somebody that's that is that's just keeping everything running. Um, you know, we're still doing upgrades. <clears throat> we're still kind of sticking with the latest, but we're not necessarily like taking leaps and um, those sort of things. You also have some organizations where maybe because of money because of other situations it truly is they just need somebody operationally that's focused on reducing costs you know keep, keeping everything functioning and so you kind of have that world and then you have the strategic the strategic cio and that's truly that business partner um and that was that focus when um i came out of my uh out of my masters was on on being that business partner and and cios that are strategic have to know all the pieces of the business. Um, I had a conversation with a couple of my team members just the other day about this, how CIOs, we need to know HR and finance and uh, and marketing and uh, the customer experience area. We, we need to understand the business lines. We need to understand how they function, um, what are their goals, um, how do their customers think. Like we have to understand all these things to then help them um, drive things. And, it, and it's a partnership because I can't just go in and go, okay, here's everything you need. And now you're going to be successful. It's, it's, we have to work together on here's what I understand and then filling that in. Um, so, so then we can work together to come up with what, what does that plan look like? But I think it's interesting because strategic CIOs, when you compare um, a strategic CIO to maybe like um, a, a CFO, um, CFOs definitely don't, well, they, you know, the, there are more strategic CFOs that do get more involved in the business lines and, and that type of thing. But, but a lot of times they, they don't have to have as much in-depth knowledge in all those areas. Um, same thing with maybe your CHROs, you know, they have to kind of know some, but not, um, so that's been my experiences with CIOs. We're expected to know that much more and a little bit more in depth. So we, um, we can be part of the business and then be, um, you know, that, that advisor to help grow and make, you know, make those decisions to help the, all the different, uh, business units and business lines, um, meet their goals. Yeah. I think, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking 
you know, we, CIOs really have to understand the process level, right? Right, not just what the, what's on paper from a strategy perspective or what the metrics are or SLAs or KPIs. That's one one which all senior executives need to know each other's area. But CIOs, I think, are the ones that actually are forced to understand that process level. And I think that's what you were getting at. That's exactly it. That's why I don't want to, for, for any of the other C's that are watching this, I would, I definitely don't want them to go, we love what you, the hell, yeah. Christy? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. So I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. That's really what it is. It's taking it that next step further from that process perspective and, um, and understanding that and understanding the why, you know, we talk about the five whys and dumping it, jumping into that. And I think that's, that's sort of the difference. All right. So when you think back to, you know, either recently or the way back machine on what transformations you've gone through that you've led, what's like some of the biggest challenges, the hardest things that you have to, that you've been faced with when it comes to transformation? It's the people. You know, if we could just get rid of all the people. No, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, and I think it, well, it, so it, it, it truly is. I think you, we have, there's that, that human factor and the, the biggest, the, the biggest challenge, if I want to be more official, I would say organizational change management, the, uh, the, 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 bi the biggest, the biggest challenge truly is that. Cause you know, if you, if you, um, if you're implementing some sort of technology, okay. You know, that that's sort of the easy part. I mean, it's not always easy because there's a lot of complexities, but sure. but but the biggest challenge is getting people all kind of rowing in the same direction and um, and getting everybody on board. And it truly is that organizational change management and having those conversations. So so all the different stakeholders feel like they're heard, that they they feel like you understand their areas and their needs and um, and you also understand their pain points and as things are being planned there's there will be disruption um anytime anytime you do any sort of transformation there will be disruption there'll be disruption whether there's going to be downtime whether it's going to be this you know you're we're moving your cheese your systems your process things are going to be different and it's going to be disruptive and so I think that that aspect, that organizational change management, having the conversations in advance to understand and get people to understand here will be this is going to be the impact. Initially, here's some of the negative, but then here's going to be the positive. Um, it's communication, 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 which you know, I've been doing this for years and years and years. And I still I will I, I still have conversations where I have to step back and go, you know what? I don't think we did it as well as we could. We did not do enough on the communication and making sure that they were on board and training and these sort of things. So that's that truly has been uh, the biggest challenge. And um, I think that um, what what help what helps with that is when when you have your CEO and your and your executive leadership, they're on board and they get pulled into it a little bit more. I think that helps because they start thinking about it from their areas a little bit more. Um, in organizations where it's sort of left up to IT, let IT just do this thing, then then you run into it more. But when it's considered an overarching business initiative, then that, that helps a lot too. What I'm hearing is partnership, right? Partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, what What does the role of like collaboration play and how does that fit in? Yeah. With I think that's the yeah. ones. Yeah. And I think so collaboration is key. And um, we we we've had some um, some sort of leadership and strategy training sessions where we've talked a little bit about collaboration. And there's there's one thing where there's collaboration of people just sharing information. But then we've talked a lot more about co-creation and um, sort of which is sort of like that that next step up of Yes, you need to have collaboration where, or I guess it's sort of the communication aspect of collaboration where people are sharing and, and keeping people informed. But then there's that co-creation piece of collaboration where people are truly pulled together and um, and working very closely together on decisions, um, on, on the ownership, um, which also helps reduce some of the finger pointing as well. But it definitely, I think, it, you have to create sort of that co-creation environment. So 
Um, some people think collaboration is having status meetings and sharing out what's going on, but that's 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 not it. It, it gets me to think of um, you know two in the box or two butts in the seat, like having that partnership with the business. So ha have you had experience doing it that way or or have you been mainly the lone wolf leading the charge? And, and if you've had, <laughs> done both, which one do you prefer? Yeah, I, I've, I've experienced both and I definitely prefer not to be not to be the lone wolf. And and what, what I've done in um, and it's been in, um, th three three of the companies that I've been in where it sort of started out as Lone Wolf. Um, and I, I've got this down pat now where I understand, you know, you look for those key people within the functional groups or the business lines and you work to pull in and, fi and find, find that buddy, find that partner um, and start working with them. And uh, for example, in, in healthcare, um, I, the company I worked for, we would implement electronic health record systems for um, state correctional facilities and state systems. And we would take these, we had we had to customize them um, for that particular contract, we had to do all these things. And initially it was all on IT. It was all on IT. And and then I worked really hard for, with our clinical teams, our clinical operations teams to um, get them to help own it. And, and then through that process, I ended up stealing a, a nurse from within their team that be yeah. became our our basically kind of like our EHR director and um and I I pulled her into IT but she was still very connected and so we created this and um and the partnership with the clinical leadership was key and what once we did that it was so much better because for a while it was if if you just have IT doing this that's you know, it, it's IT doing it. And, um, and I, I said, look, this isn't my system. This isn't, you know, I don't want to make these decisions. I'm not the one using it. I want to make sure that this is what you need and this is going to provide value to you and the patients and what we need to do here. And, um, and I, and very, very similar at other companies. And then at, at Jet, at Jet, I think it has, it definitely has not been as difficult. It's been, um, again, I think because from the top down, um, but you know, in my in my company, from the very top, it's here's what we need to do, and, and so we have, we do, we have, we have partners in each of the areas, and you know, is it perfect? No, because we're humans, and it's never going to be perfect. But but it really it helps a lot, especially with driving decisions, the communications, the organizational change management, and then that ultimate ownership of accomplishing the um, the initiative. That's great. It's really good, really good perspective. Um, let's shift a little bit and talk about tech a little bit. Emerging technologies. How the heck do you stay up with it all? It's just like every time you turn around, there's another flashy, shiny thing. How, how in your role, which is critical, how do you stay abreast of it all? So you just can't. No, I, I tell you, it, you know that's that really that. But that really is it's, question. Good question. <laughs> I mean, but it, but but it is. It is. It is. It is. And especially now, I mean, you know, we we know how um, technology how it um, technology is growing exponentially, right? And that's right. where we are. So actually, I saw um, on uh, on Instagram the other day, and it was a thing somebody posted, and it said that from when we when we had our first flight to the first to like the man on the moon was only 66 years wow. only 66 years from the first flight to the man on the moon right and then and 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 then beyond that we we've we all we all know examples of technology and how quickly things change and rapidly and if you're familiar with that something that's called ai there's this newfangled thing if you maybe 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 you've heard of this. There's like eight billion <laughs> uh, uh, webinars and conferences on this now. But there's, it, it's. I find it's 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 so so difficult to stay up on all of it. And um, but but we have to, right? We have to at least understand enough. And what I find with emerging technologies, you do have that new shiny thing. And so, sometimes you know that we all know we get 
we get those calls from somebody within the business. Hey, I saw a thing on this tech stuff. You know, do we need this? And I think that the the skill is understanding what's coming out and reading about it and understanding it and getting enough to understand, should I keep pursuing this topic deeper? Do I see something here? Or is this some shiny little thing that, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get back to that. Um, and there's, there's been some of that, but um, I think it, 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 it is it is very different difficult there's so much information so every coming in from everywhere on all sorts of new technologies um i do find that um you know, we do have to stay on top of everything new that's coming up but but again if you take the approach of understanding here's where the business is trying to go or here's the business challenges we need to solve for that you, it, it keeps it that focused versus, hey, here's a shiny object, how can I use it? Versus, I got this business challenge. Now, having an idea you know, broadly of all these things, could could that help? Um, so, because as we know, I mean, it's it's the process before the technology, but, but man, it is, it's tough, it's tough. It's tough to keep up with everything. Yeah, so it sounds like, um... You keep the eye, your eye on the prize, meaning you, you're keeping your eye on strategy and letting mm -hmm. strategy and problem issues or, or you know, goals and objectives drive where you focus, your, where you're getting your insights. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Um, but you know, board of directors will be board of directors, and when something like AI comes along, um, you know, we've got to be able to respond to that. So um, what techniques do you use um, to really do that learning? How, you know, what strategies or techniques have you, do you leverage? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you're, and you're right. I think you do have to know enough um, to be able to have those conversations and, um, and, and know what, what, what you should drive to and what you should not. And when the, the difficult part is, because I, because, you know, per personally, you know, there's so many resources and I, so as soon as I start seeing it, I start drilling in, reading a little bit more and you, ha you have, um, you know, of course you have the, some of the resources, you have, you know, Infotech and Gartner and you have some of these that'll help at least summarize, capture it. Um, and um, now, now I have, I have one of my favorite robots. I have, you know, chat GPT and, and Bard and all these things where I can go in and even ask it, Hey, explain this to me you know and it'll even pull things out so uh we can we can do that but um but what i like to do as well is i have i don't have a huge it team i don't think anyone i don't think any cio will ever say i have so many people that i have all these people that can kind of hang out and uh, research you know leading tech and, right. and and do all sorts of pocs and um try things out but but we still have to try and do that so even with a leaner team um, I've always found that I, in each of the companies I've worked in, I've always found that I've had two or three people that that um, thrive off of learning new things, and uh, and these are the people who, even if it's kind of beyond their day job hours, they get excited about it. They're reading about it on the weekend, whatever, and it's also it's tagging you know one or two people. Hey, can you take a little bit of a deeper dive into this, and let's sort of look at what are our options. But um, so I and, and those people, they love it because they love to learn it. And then if they can be involved in in helping drive things ultimately from that, they they love it. But um, but yeah, it's that's that's what I find. You have to pull everybody together just to understand and share the learning. I love it. I love it. So can you do you have any insights on the future for us from a technology perspective that you like to share? Anything that's keeping you up at night or got you curious? So, so, so interesting, keep keeping me up. So, um, so when we, when we talk about, um, the, the future, so let, let me, let me say one thing before I dive into sort of like tech, um, yeah. cyber is a huge topic. Cyber, I think pro probably out of my entire life, um, the only thing that would really keep me up at night is cyber. Um, anyone who has an AT&T phone in the U S, um, yesterday, oh, okay. Um, for hours and hours and hours, your phone did not work. You didn't, and and everybody was saying it was probably a cyber attack. That was the first. That was the first thing on everybody's mind, right? 
Um, so that's that's probably the, the that's the thing that keeps me up at night. The things that keep me energized and excited, you know, when we think of new technologies, and this sort of kind of blends with cyber as well, is clearly artificial intelligence. And be and before I say artificial intelligence, before AI started really blowing up, it really auto automation was is mm -hmm. is kind of the hot topic. And I think it all sort of falls into that into that topic that we can we can make um, the humans a lot more effective. We can do so much more with less. Um, we can we can produce way more widgets with the same, you know, we can do these things. We can uh, we can take on more customers. We can take on more, we can do all these things um, and, you know, with, with automation. And, uh, and we are already going down that path and doing a lot with automation, whether it was, whether it's more basic workflows or it's bots, things like that. That's, that's already been, you know, great and a big help in so many ways. And then now introduce AI, which, so now you're talking about taking the, these robots that now can, you know, beyond machine learning, beyond that sort of just repetitive, now it's somebody, now it's somebody, a robot, a thing, that a, a computer that can start thinking like the humans and um, and help make decisions. And, and as we talk about some of the potential use cases for that, it's not just um, making things more efficient. It truly is making a better experience and um, increasing revenue. I I can't say on video right now some of the ideas that we have floating around, but, oh, cool. but some of the some of the ideas that we've been looking at from an AI perspective. I mean, we're we're a little bit far from from them happening or getting that done, but some of the ideas that we're coming up with are are really really pretty cool. And um, and when you think about increasing revenue, um, ma <clears throat> making things so much easier for customers to um, to do more with us, um, for them to be able to consume more, um, to be able to reach more. There's there's so much. So I think um, I think truly on the AI side, I think that there's there is um, going to be so much more than anyone can even think right now. Because I think even some of our use cases might be more basic than they than they could be. And, and when I mentioned cyber is on the um, on the AI side, because as we all know, when it comes to cybersecurity with threats, you know, the threat landscape, it, it's a cat and mouse chase. It's yep. it's not it's not set up your security tools and yep. you're safe. It, it's it's never that it's continual. And so then you think about AI, the threat actors, they're they're using AI. They're using this. And so we have to look at how can we use that to fight against that, you know them, and I really think that. Um, so when I think about AI, I think about the what the the biggest thing that keeps me up at night, the biggest threat, the biggest fear. Um, can AI can help on that side, and at the and then on the other side, what gets me excited about growing and increasing revenue and making a better customer experience? It can be used for both. So, um, kind of in my world, there's that sort of thought process on both those sides. Um, but but I. AI. I feel. I feel like I'm drinking the Kool Aid by talking about AI, but it, it truly, it it truly, it truly is going to be something that's amazingly transformational. Using it for good versus evil. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Aspirationally, offensively, de defensively. I love it. Yep. I love it. good stuff. All right. Final question, Christy. You're sitting in a coffee shop, and you just got your latte, and <laughs> you're sitting there with. 20 year old Christy Nader looking across the table. What is she was such a dork? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry, she still is. She still is. <laughs> you are sorry. not. You're the sorry. coolest person I know. So, what would you tell her? Oh my gosh, yeah, no, that's a it's a great question. And, um, and, and as you mentioned earlier, I'm I'm I am a huge, huge proponent of mentoring and um and helping lift others up and um grow, growing up in my career i and you know i've had this conversation i never had official mentors i just i did not i had i had one cio who um she actually should i say she maybe not officially mentored me but she she did try to 
um, share more with me and um, and some of her wisdom and some of these things. And but I never really did. And so it's so important to me to be able to do that with others and and share the information and, and help them grow. And I think look, looking back to that, I think the the advice that I give is um, is do everything that you can to to meet people in the industry that you're in. Um, you know, go go to events if you're you know, I'm. I'm very, very comfortable socially, so I can go to these sort of things and easily meet people. But a lot of people, especially in technology, maybe they're not as much and not just technology. I mean, you could be a nurse, you could be, you know, and you might not, but, but come up with whatever skills that you need to, to sort of overcome that and go, go to events and meet people, have conversations, have conversations beyond how's the weather you know, talk, talk to people about things that you're interested in doing and ask them about what they've done and um, start start building that up so you can build up your network. You can learn from people. Um, so you're you're not just trying to reach out to find people if you need a job. You're truly kind of learning about their worlds. And um, and, you know, that I think that that's so, so important to find those people that can help you learn, help you grow. Um, and then at the same time in your in your own job, if you want to keep growing in your job, you really need to be that person that um, everybody sees as someone that owns the work that they do. Um, that if you are that you're if you're given something that you're not just doing that assignment and check done, here you go. It's Hey, so I did this, but by the way, as I was looking at it, I also noticed, should we do this? Or how about if we do this? Or there could be a better way. Or, hey, I'd love to learn and do a little bit more in this area and, and take it upon yourself to to ask for more and and show that that you are that that person that wants to grow and wants to take on more and they know that that you will own it and you will you know you will get those things done. Um so I think it's kind of it's kind of twofold. It's it's you. You have to be responsible for, for finding for finding some of those people that mentor you, even if it's not official mentors, but just learning from them, because uh, you're the you're the only person that is ever going to be your own advocate for your career, right? You, you know, it's rare that people, everybody brings you along, and uh, and then in your own job, same thing. Advocate for yourself. Show them that you really that you're that you're in it to win it. I, I joke with my team that I try to um, I try to. Uh, create an environment where people are enabled and I enabled to get things done and I removed obstacles and I joke that trying to create an environment where people can just get shit done and if you are seen as that person that that gets shit done you know you yes. ask good questions drive through things then you are you, you're you're gonna grow that you are you're gonna grow well I should UGSD exactly exactly I love 100%. it. I, love, I can't believe you just said that. I was just <laughs> like, kindred <laughs> spirits. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough, Christy Nader of Jet Aviation. Um, it's been super fun to get to know you better, and hopefully, everybody will get an opportunity to learn from your words of wisdom. And um, really appreciate you sharing uh, your time today. And just want to thank you. Well, cool. Well, you know, I love spending time with you. Lisa, you're a rock star. Back at you. <laughs> back, at, back, back at you. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Thank you. So this is, this is yeah. awesome. I'm glad that you're doing this, this series, too. It's very cool. All right. Well, we're going to say goodbye now. See, see you guys on the flip side. Yep. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs>